welcome to your 2020 reading. Um, I hope you're finding the new year treating you well so far. <clears throat> um, there's a lot going on globally, obviously. Um, there's stuff going on in the Middle East right now that's, you know, revving back up um, with the troops over there and the death of the general um, in Iran. Um, and then we have huge fires that are engulfing Australia, you know, as we speak. Um, it's very devastating, as well as the earthquakes that just happened in Puerto Rico. And they're, again, without power. Poor island that just keeps happening to them. Um, we've got the election coming up this year, and all of this Capricorn energy is just being shaken up right now. Like it's a snow globe and Pluto has come in and it's just like, you know, really causing a snowstorm. Um, we are going to see a lot of chaos before we can see the light. You know, that's one of the things with water signs. Obviously, you guys probably can attest to that, that things usually tend to get worse before they get better. Um, and so they're can be some really drastic things going on. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the period of time this in, this transit, transit is going to impact the world because this is the first time in, I believe, centuries that Pluto and Saturn have come this close to contact. And those are very, very powerful planets because they come so far out in the solar system. So the farther out the planets are in our solar system, the more heavily their impact is on the world at large. You know, the personal planets, you got Mercury, Venus, and Mars, those really impact the individual because they're so close to the sun and they're so close to Earth. But more so, the sun is who you are. It's, it's your birthday itself. It represents, you know, your birthday is represented by the sun's position, you know, and where it is. Um, and so when we get to Saturn's like middle to outer, then we go to Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto, which a lot of people have dismissed in recent years as even being a part of our solar system, um, at least scientifically. So Pluto's got a lot of anger, a lot of aggression. Um, you know, Scorpios really, when provoked, are the ones not to mess with. Um, I think that much can be said. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I don't feel like that's, you know, a negative stereotype or anything. It just means that they represent typically more negative attributes and it's almost like the water signs burden to carry um the harder aspects of life you know in astrology unfortunately that burden is kind of on you guys like cancer scorpio pisces you guys have more of those negative attributes because in a life cycle there have to be ups and downs and you guys represent what it is to be down, whether it's a result of a loss, like a loss of a loved one, someone that you cared about, um, you know, whether it's just a general setback, you feel like you get pushed down time and time again, people suppress you, um, and you guys are very, very sensitive. So you really take things deeply, and specifically you guys as Pisces, have a really hard time bringing that stuff to the surface. You know, even though I think a lot of people think of Pisces as very bubbly, but also super sensitive, it still is like n no like glitch of like, or, you know, there's, it's hardly a glimpse of what you guys really contain and like how far down it goes. Cause I have had the pleasure of knowing a few Aquarius Pisces that are both in that like cusp period. And I can see the Pisces aspects um, against the Aquarius. So, like, you can really see how secretive and how isolated those individuals can appear to be. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're consciously, you know, isolating yourself or, or bringing about distance, but it usually does permeate your personality. And the people around you probably don't always understand why you can be so reclusive, you know? Um, 
But yeah, so we have a lot coming up this year. Um, I hope some good stuff for you guys. We are going to start by drawing one of the major arcana cards, which is the beginning of the tarot. Uh, it consists of maybe 20% of the actual deck, but these cards are really high impact cards that can kind of shape the reading um, and what is going on in your life in a big way. So we're going to try to draw one card for Pisces in 2020 and see what is most at play for you guys. Um, and you can just watch this video as many times as you want throughout the year to kind of check back in. I really encourage you to do so um, and see where you are, you know, in reference to the reading and how it progresses. All right, Pisces, don't want to come out and say it. I am one of those people that likes the cards to present themselves. I try not to force it. There we go. Okay. Um, the world. Whoa. Oh, my God. Wow. That's so exciting, you guys. Honestly, this may be the most positive card I've drawn for all 12 signs, major arcana-wise. I mean, like, that's so powerful right out the gate. The 21st card of the Major Arcana. This is almost the very end. No, it is. The world is the last card. Wow. So you guys are really, really coming to an end. Like, not... <laughs> okay, let me rephrase that. The end of a journey. This is the last card in the Major Arcana that starts with the Fool. And it's kind of thought of as his, the Fool's journey. Um, as he moves through the Emperor, you know, strength, temperance, I just named all the fire signs, I don't know why, the devil, the tower, the wheel of fortune, judgment, like all of those major life transitions, you guys are already past all that. You are ahead of the game. Kudos. Um, the world just means you could literally go any direction you choose, like, 2020 is going to be like a really big year for y'all. You're going to be kind of in the spotlight to a degree. The world brings a lot of attention usually um, to the individual. And it just means that you've reached a level of success or um, accomplishment, you know, however you want to see it. Like you, you really you've really like kind of come to a close. You know, it's not so much about you guys starting fresh. Um, it's it's more so about you guys kind of wrapping up. So 2020 is almost going to be like, how can you close out the, the last decade? So maybe it kind of means that um, you kind of like took your time a little bit. When it transitioned to 2020, you still need a little more time to really say your goodbyes. Um, let's see here. Okay, yeah, the hangman, that resonates. Um, because you guys do tend to be slow movers because you come at the end of the zodiac. So um, I'm going to kind of shoot myself for saying you're ahead of the game. I mean, not necessarily, but that's a really good card to get out of the bat, the world. Um, it means that it's kind of all being summed up. Like, everything's on the table, but in a good way. Like, it's a very positive card. So the Hangman, let's talk about this, because this is a card that Pisces often gets. Um, the Hangman is upside down. Essentially, he has a different perspective, one that other people dismiss quickly, probably because it just looks so different and sometimes silly. Um, I really see, like, Luna Lovegood when I think of this card, and she is so, like, um, kind of in her head, like, but in, like, a, a much, not ditzier, but a more whimsical sense, um, whereas, like, maybe an Aquarius would be more serious, you guys are a little more playful, um, and the Hangman, it kind of looks a little fun to hang upside down, right? But the, uh, the message of this card is that you are kind of hung up on an idea um, of like how things are, which doesn't seem to be the reality because you are literally looking at things upside down. You're looking at them in um, 
a way that's almost unhelpful. I mean, granted, this card is not reversed, so it's not so much the negative aspects of this card, um, but it just means that you're really... You're in your own world, basically, and... <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't have said that better because it literally came right after the world. So there could be some kind of um, um, degree of which you guys just are rejecting what's really going on. You know, like there's a dismissal almost. So let's see what else we got here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So Eight of Swords. So yes, so we're a little bit in denial um, about how dangerous um, the thoughts can be, how hard we are on ourselves, and how we give ourselves no room to move. You know, how oftentimes we hear the phrase like, um, you're your own worst enemy, and that's always like Eight of Swords. You know, it's like, the person that's just putting themselves down before anyone else will, and maybe when no one else will, you know? Sometimes you have to look at it as like, you don't know how other people are gonna respond to stuff, and so you can't psych yourself out before something even happens. Um, unfortunately, it just looks like you guys are really stuck in that headspace because we got the hanged man right beside it. So that kind of re-emphasizes that that kind of solitary prison that I think Pisces is kind of attributed to. I mean, you guys um, can be so distant, so hard to reach, like you're on an island and there's no technology or anything that's going to get you to interact with another human being, you know? And I, um, I can't imagine how that feels sometimes, but... Um, you know, it's it's really disappointing to see when we have the world and then we have this head stuff going on where you're just not willing to see, um, not the error of your ways, but just how um, limiting, you know, your own, like, voices can be. You know what I mean? Like, the way you're talking to yourself, um, the way you think about things is just, uh, it's really holding you back. Um, yeah, it's not to say that you guys don't have insights because you do. And oftentimes, um, just like Luna, she has those moments where she inspires Harry, you know, where she, even though she can be dismissed so easily by somebody a little more logical, like a Hermione, maybe like an earth sign, um, which are your guys' opposites, so I'm sure that's pretty normal. Um, she often does chime in with the great ideas. They're just very unexpected, and um, it takes someone like Harry to really see the, um, the beauty or at least the, the insight, the valuability, you know, the resourcefulness that Luna can provide. So it's so funny, I guess I'm stuck on Harry Potter today because I was talking about Dumbledore in the Aquarius video. Um, but I, you know, it's such a universal film or series that I feel like everybody knows a little bit about those characters by now. Um, so we have the world, we have the hangman, and we have the eight of swords. So Eight of Swords can even um, suggest possible sickness. I wouldn't say it's like um, really like hard, hard sickness, like disease. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, Eight of Swords is typically more so like a common cold, maybe the flu. Um, you guys might run into a few bouts of that throughout the year. Um, and it's sometimes we get sick because we need like a, almost a spiritual cleanse. And if you notice, just like I was saying earlier, things tend to get worse before they get better. And so I often find that when I get sick, 
Um, it's like, it's in, it's right before something big is happening in my life. And it's, I'm just like, well, why is, why am I getting sick when this like positive thing is coming into my life? And I'm like, I feel like it's almost like the universe is like push to rid myself of like more toxicity before I let something great into my life. And so it's like, you guys can really look at it that way. It's like, you know, um, obviously no one wants to get sick and I wouldn't encourage you to go out and get sick. Um, so <laughs> please don't do that. But it, it's almost like a, it's a push to make room for more, you know? Um, so the world, like I said, you know, it's, it's almost like one of those cards that's really hard to define because there's so much in it. And it's like, it's not really tied to like one essence you know the world is limitless it's you know it means that you can kind of chart your own course that there's no one really pushing you in a direction and that's what's so fun about it is that you guys can if you want to up and move you know you can go very far with it if you want to just take a vacation you can do that but the world is usually exploratory in nature so it's to me, that would hint that there's a lot of learning that you guys will undertake in 2020, um, just because I feel like you're finally opening the space to, um, I guess, experiences, but you just run into the problem where you're, uh, you're too, not stubborn, maybe stubborn, you're a little you just won't let go of your own perspective. And so it's like when opportunities come that are wanting you to step into another person's shoes, you're just like, no, I really like the ones that I'm wearing. I love these kitten heels. Try and get them off of me. I challenge you, you know, kind of a thing. So, um, and it's just, that's not what's helpful. You know, take an Aquarius perspective and just like live through everybody. I mean, you find so much insights when you do. Like it's really, it's really cool to take an approach to where you're trying to see things through other people's eyes and maybe even see yourself through that. So, oh yeah, Wheel of Fortune Reverse. Okay, um, so I'm going to draw some cards here. We've been doing a fun, oh, one's already presented itself. Um, we've already been doing a really fun... Uh, extended video so you can watch part two which is the extended version of this reading um, there's gonna be instructions on how to get that video down below and uh, if you have any questions just email me my email will be on there as well um, and I hope to see you guys in the extended alright let's see what the rest of these cards are gonna be